While some products we see on Shark Tank are truly ingenious, there are others that are really strange or simply completely useless. And sometimes, it is the pitch itself that causes the sharks to lose all interest in investing. So sit back and relax as we dive into the Shark Tank and take a look back at 8 of the worst pitches. Scented candles are traditionally thought of as products for women, but Johnson Bailey wanted to change that by making sure that his candles would keep the house smelling like a man. That is why he came up with the original man candle, which comes with aromas such as beer, barbecue, golf course, football and even farts. The infamous fart scented candle. Yes, I'd like to see that. There you are. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Johnson was seeking an investment of $50,000 in exchange for a 25% stake in the company, but the Sharks didn't see any potential and thought the idea was too gimmicky, so Johnson had to go home to hand pour some more candles without a deal. Johnson, there's nothing proprietary but putting wax in a can and selling it. This falls into a category of product that I call crap for tourists. Next up is an episode from Season 5, where Julie and Ozma, who introduced themselves as two sassy girls from LA, came to the Sharks looking for $50,000 in exchange for 20% equity in their company which produces a supposedly never seen before revolutionary cooking lifestyle communion product. To illustrate the need for the product, the two started telling a story about how they hosted a dinner party for their friends where the main dish was fish. After dinner, the girls hit the town, heading for a swanky LA lounge where someone approached Julie to tell her that her hair smelled like fish. To avoid horrific experiences like this one in the future, Julie and Ozma created the cooking cap that protects your hair from smells and keeps your hair out of the food. We've created the cooking cap! Ta-da! <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Cooking cap oh is so easy to use. Their quote-unquote modern version of a traditional chef hat looked a lot more like an old-timey baby hat which already brought a smile to the sharks' faces, but when the girls finished the pitch with their slogan, hair smell like crap, get a cap, the investors couldn't help but laugh out loud. If you don't have enough time to have a cup of coffee in the morning, why not simply get your caffeine dose on the go? That is apparently what the creators of Nutribox thought when they started a company that produces caffeine-infused sugar cubes, with their star product being chewable coffee cubes. Our company is Nutribox, and we're seeking $2 million in exchange for 5% stake in our company. Oh, hello. <laughs> Apart from the fact that it doesn't exactly sound tasty, the Sharks also had a problem with the concoction as it not only contained something called L-theanine to supposedly reduce caffeine jitters, but it was also not known whether there might be some long-term health risks from consuming concentrated caffeine mixed with other chemicals. I'm worried about the long-term consequences and so I'm out. All of our ingredients are generally regarded as safe. Generally regarded is not the same as safe. They were also not impressed by the co-founders' ridiculous valuation of $40 million for their company and unsurprisingly they didn't get a deal. Scares the hell out of me as an investor and it scares the hell out of me as a human being because I don't think we know the long-term consequences. It scares the hell out of me, $40 million for sugar. Mark Sullivan marketed himself as an entrepreneur, songwriter, ladies clothing designer and inventor during his pitch in Shark Tank's third season and left the celebrity investors rather confused. He came to present his Sullivan Generator, a machine that produces natural energy from Earth's rotation and, conveniently enough, gold as a byproduct. In gold. What? Gold. Gold? Gold. G-O-L-D. G-O-L-D. Sullivan had the vision of developing this new technology and leave a lasting legacy of goodness, but even though he had apparently already invented over 1,000 products that make over $1 billion a year in profits, the Sharks seemed to find it hard to believe anything he was saying or just to keep a straight face. I've won engineering awards. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm thinking maybe you should. The pitch sounded so out of this world that Robert asked Sullivan how long he was visiting Earth for, and Damon wondered if anyone had ever called him crazy. Sullivan wasn't shaken by that, however, and when none of the sharks wanted to give him a deal, he simply stated that they probably just didn't get it. James Lavatola and Brian Pitt walked out into the shark tank with an attractive brunette with an umbrella trailing behind them. The woman went up to the mannequin in a racing outfit waiting on the stage and held the umbrella over its head. Lavatola and Pitt then revealed that they were looking for a whopping $5 million in exchange for 34% equity in their production before pitching their feature-length action film called Track Days to the Sharks. 
Mark Cuban didn't even let them finish their first statement, but went out immediately. Now, Track Days is a full-length action film. I'm out. It revolves around the exciting world, the I'm motorcycle out. world championship. <laughs> I'm out. And Pitt tried to continue saying that their movie was about the motorcycle world championship. He kept stressing that it wasn't about the popular sports of motocross, for which there was no viable market in the United States according to him, but about the MotoGP, a lesser known sport that receives little to no attention at all in the United States. Lavatola and Pitt also mentioned that no movie about this sport had ever been made before showing the teaser trailer they had made for the Sharks. However, the trailer didn't show any actors or scenes, since the team of a former stuntman and a writer didn't even have a script for track days yet. That's it? That's it? <laughs> so boys, you want five million bucks to make a movie. And as a result, Damon John also went out, which made it the fastest the two Sharks had ever gone out. The other sharks were not interested in taking this kind of risk either, and Lavatola and Pitt went home without a deal. They later launched a Kickstarter campaign but only managed to get $12,000 instead of the $2 million they were seeking, and the project got cancelled early, and to this day the movie still hasn't been made. When Zack Crane stepped in front of the Sharks, it almost felt like he had come to the wrong show as he certainly stood out from his fellow entrepreneurs. It wasn't just his outfit, with the short shorts, the top hat and the bare chest, but also the slow somersault upon entering the tank and the two-fingered greeting. And although this wasn't the worst pitch the Sharks had ever seen, it definitely reminded more of a comedic magic performance than a business presentation. <laughs> Zack presented his so-called freakers, which are basically koozies that fit any beverage and come in funky designs. While the product was actually pretty cool, Zack's big personality almost overshadowed it, and although some of the sharks fell in love with his craziness, it was too much for the others, and ultimately none of them were willing to invest in Zack's business. If I had to listen to beep beep beep, hey Mark, beep beep beep, beep what's up, <laughs> beep beep beep, I'd shoot myself, I'm out. If you watch the show on a regular basis, you will know that a good inventor doesn't automatically make a good entrepreneur, and Jason Woods, creator of the first electric-powered bodyboard Chimera, definitely wasn't the latter. He was asking for $250,000 for 20% of his company, but while the Sharks were intrigued by his invention, they thought the position the rider is in looked awkward and they were worried about their safety. And as the pitch went on, the Sharks also noticed that Woods didn't actually have a business plan. It turned out that he had invested about $130,000 of his own money over the previous 10 years, but only managed to come up with a prototype. He didn't have any customers or even a patent, and Mark Cuban eventually said that he was full of crap, while Damon John told him that it was the worst pitch he'd ever seen on Shark Tank. Obviously, I it didn't have sales. I'm gonna give it to you straight. It's the worst pitch I've ever seen. I'm out. Woods obviously didn't get a deal, but the boards recently became available to purchase for around $3,500. Alex Bertelli and Clay Banks appeared on Shark Tank during Season 10, introducing Haven, a company that creates a kind of wedge lock, which basically uses physics to make sure the door can be opened from the outside. Their entire business model is based on the idea that the deadbolt is an inferior lock, but unfortunately, they didn't exactly prove their point. They claimed that a burglar could typically break down a door with a traditional deadbolt lock within 5 kicks, and in order to demonstrate their product superiority, they had set up two doors, one with a deadbolt and the other one with a haven lock. Alex then started kicking the door with a traditional lock but just couldn't kick it down, as the shark started cheering for him before bursting into laughter. Show them how easy this is. Come on Alex, kick it hard. <laughs> He eventually got a stopper and started smashing the door, but it just wouldn't work and as the sharks laughed hysterically, Clay continued the pitch while Alex was still trying to break through the door. A break-in occurs every 18 seconds in the United States. The demonstration of their own lock went as expected, and Alex then decided to give the other door one last try, doing a fly kick that finally broke the door and sent Alex flying through it. The sharks were crying with laughter the entire time, and although the co-founders managed to save the pitch, the numbers still didn't convince any of the sharks to invest in Haven. 
Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.